what's up? This is Saladin Salam for Cain Corsa, Connor Depressor, Historical Talk. I'm going to read you this article from Shana DeMoss, Castle Guard, Cain Corsa, USA. And Shana writes, Is the Cain Corsa lost? Alright, let me, you know, just show y'all that it ain't no fabrication or nothing like that. It's out of a magazine. So I'm going to read it right now to you. Okay. Wait up. All right, Shauna writes. What a question. Yet, here I am in my 22nd year of Kane Corso involvement and observation, worried that it might be so. When comparing the historic to the modern Corso, even a novice can see there is a striking difference between the two. To a sure, balanced, robust, functional dog is transforming into a extremely head type, a uh, cubersome structure, health issues laden, of a popular breeds. How did this happen and why? She writes, lack of education. The Corso is a difficult breed to master with a few true mentors to guide it. Unfortunately, most of the puppies that have been born in the last decades have been produced in ignorance by novice programs. A breeder must have an in-depth understanding of five complicated, equal, important Corso categories in order to establish a solid foundation for a breeding program. Mm. These five building blocks are actually in order to honor the Corso in one's program. They taking years to study to attain the vigilance to keep they are correct type, function, structure, health temperament, and correct line building. So, many puppies are lacking these basic breed elements, but they are still packaged with the same breeding label and sold to the next uneducated person to continue the cycle, which is absolutely the truth. The truth is a, a real breeder never stops learning. They are always an apprentice. They are always seeking knowledge, surrounding themselves with experienced peers that challenge them to do better and to learn more. Oh. <laughs> Devotion to the Corso and its per preservation is their first priority. Therefore, they constantly search for the truth. Ooh, that's deep. That's deep. All right, it says, of the breed in which they find them, they implement them, and the breed will be, I mean, the, be, the, the breed, excuse me, will be far better off in passion of teamwork and not to let, I mean, no ego or purse, no ego or purse. So what she basically saying, excuse me, because I know I'm not reading this correct. What she's basically saying is that, don't let your ego or the money issues get involved in your breeding programs. That's what she's saying. Okay. Um, where the prevailing culture of the Corso world, she said, a breeder must in depth understand the five complicated and important, I mean, equilateral importance, so categories in order to establish a solid, a solid foundation for a breeding program. So I just read that. So, all right. The fat of breeding. The fatter breeding is a partner of an uneducated instead of taking this time, taking the time to personally learn the correct course of exemplifies many people just blindly follow this. So let me go into depth what she's saying. Hold up. And turn the page. Oh man, please. All right, there you go. All right, so to continue on, hold on, let me make it where I can read it to you guys.
All right. She writes, has been a disaster for, for our breed. So many times have breeding choices have been made based solely on show wins. Breeders, breed of popularity or even color. These poor choices are exactly how several generations of pushed in faces, doom heads, dome heads, excuse me, bulging eyes and horrible structures have been altered in the course of the breed. One popular, popular sire or to the next possible blindly bottleneck, the gene pool has enriched traits that are so widely spread they cannot be eliminated if they needed to be. And she's right. And then I uh, beg to differ. Because I'm going to say this. On some real stuff. If you breed away from it. It's going to go away. It's going to take time. But you have to breed away from it. But okay. Stop breeding everything on four legs. She says. An honest experienced breeder knows full well. That a litter produced from years of careful engineering may may only produce very few obsessional pups. I said this. Okay. Um, and well that only the best examples should be chosen to carry on their genetics. If a breeder does get a few pups from a litter that are correct, they still may not be healthy and should be disregarded anyway. Yet, in our market driven, driven for, okay, driven culture, medical, Medicare Risky is sold, no, she didn't say Medicare, but Medi or, I mean, Dory, all right, culture, Risky is sold for top dollar and bread aimlessly. So she's saying that um, priority on the aspect of a healthy dog is put to the back, the, the, the back burner. Like nobody wants to do that. Considering this, it isn't a hard to imagine how our breed became littered with unhealthy, incorrect dogs. The solution is simple. Breeders need to be aware that they may never recoup their investments. This is true. So like I was saying before, that when you buy a car, so it's an investment. So I'm getting this investment and I'm buying this dog on the aspect of breed and then to find out that I don't have the right or correct dog. So what I do, I still breed the dog anyway. I said the solution is simple. Breeders need to be aware and they may never recoup their investments. Um, the amount of money and time that it takes to produce a quality dog is stagnating. When, re when the return on the money is the driven factor, shortcuts and in inevitable, the inevitable. Guess what? There's no shortcuts to producing a superior dog. Oh, I think I said that. And dog breeding period. Okay. Along with that, we need to be honest with ourselves. As much of 90% of, of what we produce should be sold as pets or spayed or neutered contracts. Temptation should be resisted to the past of the medical or unhealthy to another person for breeding just for a few extra bucks. Kennel blindness. All right, as a coastal breeder, far too often we make excuses for our dogs that they lack quality. Instead, we need to be critical of our program. To save this breed, we must learn to be honest about what we have despite every fault of every dog we own and produce. No doubt. There is no perfect coastal. In fact, we have already admitted there are few nice ones. Breeders need to examine their programs and come up with a, a structural plan to better the breed. Yes, this is an action, not just, just a saying. 
Any dog that is not worthy should be eliminated. Many current programs would benefit from the thorough emplacement and no impl impl oh my god excuse me uh implantation implantation of the of the one strike your your one strike your out rule all right so what she's saying is if, if people implement this stuff implement implement what she's suggesting that the dogs would be better off she said for examples are boxer bull mastiff head types gone Epilepsy presence and more than one close relative gone. And damn, if she's saying that, then a lot of the show breeders, um, the show breeders, um, what you call it, the show breeders, dogs, a lot of these dogs would be gone. Like <laughs> some real stuff. I'm just keeping it live and keeping it real with y'all. The Italian cold souls would literally be gone. But I, right, I'm gonna keep reading. Um, she said. The steep shoulders and bad rear ends gone. Fearful temperaments gone. I agree. I have to agree with this. The stronger the stronger the program is on the the ground level, the better the odds of it actually contributing to the breed in a positive way. Agreed. As breeders, we must make a tough decision right now. There are some basic ideas that will serve us in this process they are set a good example in the um um and showing the dog you know your exhibits exhibitation um she says the question when choosing what sh what to show should not be can this dog finish but does this dog deserves to be a champion and if it is it, i mean excuse me it is my opinion that the title champion has become quite cheap i agree and the reason why she's saying that because again, I'm gonna say this again. Chino, a boxer hybrid, was a three time world champion. So, like I was saying in other videos, I'm supposed to respect that? No, I'm not supposed to respect that. But I'm gonna keep reading. Um, it is an, it's an opinion and a title champion has, I mean, she says it, it became quite cheap. Dozens. And dozens of pet quality consoles win ribbons every year. I'm going to read that again. To the you show enthusiasts that thought, you know, like my console is all right. I'm going to read it again. She says, consoles win ribbons every year. Dozens and dozens of them, she said. Pet quality consoles. Ooh. <laughs> all right, let me read on. While some blame, while while some blame can be laid on the feet of the uneducated or even the unethical political judges, we can't deny the fact that there would be no standard champions if only quality dogs were entered. What has happened to our breed pride? Agreed. When did the breeders' reckon, recognition become more important than the, the breed quality? Agreed. We need to remember our obligation to present the correct examples the public to learn from. Agreed. Agreed. All right. Next, realize, realize to the importance of an exceptional brood, bitches. Um, hold on. <laughs> 